Jewish Voice for Peace is a group that's speaking out nationwide to battle racism, anti-Semitism, and Islamophobia. We talked to Emily Miller and Joe Levine from the Western Massachusetts chapter to find out what the organization is concerned about and what they're aiming to accomplish. Jewish Voice for Peace is a national grassroots organization with over 60 chapters, uh, with a rabbinic council, an art advisory, a youth council, to, and um, we are inspired by Jewish tradition for social justice to work for a just and lasting peace for Israelis and Palestinians, one that's based on international human rights, full equal rights, um, and, and international law. Wow, that's, that's a lot to, <laughs> lot to tackle, but we'll, we'll talk more about it and let, let you do that. Joe Levine, let me ask you, I, I heard about your organization's activities locally because of a, a demonstration, a street standout, if you will, up on State Street. You did uh, in connection uh, prior to Hanukkah right. in December to bring attention to your concerns, in particular right now, about what's going on in this country following the presidential election. Yes. Um, in fact, the, the, our domestic concerns and our international concerns are really of a piece. Again, the, the issue is equality, justice, and human rights. So uh, right before Hanukkah, which happened to be start on Christmas Eve, we had this action on December 21st, which was the winter solstice, and 25 cities around the country uh, ch had chapters of Jewish Voice for Peace that stood out and partnered with local organizations, often organizations that are fighting racism, fighting Islamophobia, fighting um, uh, anti-gay prejudice. Um, and we held signs that um, uh, uh, um, created a human menorah. So that's it, menorah, thank you. Right? It's hard to figure out how to put that in words. Yeah, we I'm created struggled. a human menorah, and each one had a commitment for each candle, we had a commitment about fighting injustice and, and the like. But we're especially concerned, given all the incidents that have occurred since the Trump election and the rhetoric that surrounded the Trump campaign, that there's going to be um, a tremendous increase in hostility to immigrants, to refugees, to people of Muslim faith. And it's really important, and especially as Jews, especially important, that we stand up and make it known that we will not stand for it, that we will fight back, that we will not be quiescent during this period, and that we have an agenda that we have under any administration, which is to fight for equality, justice, human rights, and we're going to pursue that. I know a, a great piece of Jewish tradition and Jewish theology is to pray for those who might be in opposition to you, to hope you have not offended anyone in the course of your day. I think many people are fascinated to hear a Jewish group talk about Islamophobia. Well, I mean, one thing, one reason why people are probably sometimes surprised is that there are a number of very powerful mainstream Jewish organizations, the Conference of, of Presidents of American Jewish Organizations, the Anti-Defamation League, there are a whole number of them, that have been pushing them, have been pushed more and more to the right wing of the political spectrum, mm -hmm. have um, engaged in Islamophobia themselves. But most uh, polls that are done of American Jews throughout the country show that those organizations do not represent the Jewish community by and large. In fact, a majority of Jewish Democrats now actually are in favor of some form of sanction against Israel for their um, oppression of Palestinians. We don't have to think back too far to the greatest injustice I think ever done to any racial or ethnic group, the Holocaust. And, and I know when I have been at Jewish organizations or Jewish religious services, there's always the talk of social justice and how others should not suffer and how there's a responsibility for those who have suffered and understand, and, and we still have plenty of anti-Semitism around too, let's be honest, but for those people to speak out against injustice against others. Well, I, I'm going to pre- It's very start emotional, it is, with, it is. With um, just a little bit back to the last question to, as a segue. Please, please. Um, that the, about, it's, 
it's what Joe was saying. It's about there's this false sort of sense of consensus, and um, amongst American Jews, um, and there are voice there are voices that have not been heard. There there are particular voices that have been um, sort of controlling the narrative and giving a sense of American Jews feel this way and. And that includes narratives about the lessons that we're supposed to take from, from the Shoah, I like to call it. And that, so I think, you know, one lesson is Jews are never safe wherever they are, so we have to build a fortress and separate ourselves. And another interpretation analysis is that it's when people uh, connect our struggles and see injustice and how no one is benefiting from it, you know, um, that it's, it's in making those connections that we have, I mean, that's, that's a, a, a sacred and to me uh, interfaith religious p practice in all traditions that we, we recognize the suffering in others, we connect and we support each other and that's, that's the beautiful vision, that's the lesson that I choose to take, not that I will, that I, um, that unconditional support of the policies of a particular government um, in in the Middle East is, you know, is required of me to stay safe or honor a, a horrific historical moment. But actually that that moment is is, you know, helps me to understand history and this moment and remember that we need to we need to respond loudly and clearly um, when we see oppression and injustice and hatred. Jewish Voice for Peace, Emily Miller. Joe Levine, thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you Thank so you. much for having us.